Hi there, and good afternoon, or good morning if you're joining us from the United States. Welcome to this 4NAV Coffee Break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at 4NAV, and I'll be your presenter today. As this Coffee Break is live, you can ask questions using the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer your questions at the end of the Coffee Break. Today, we are going to have a look at conditional formatting of 4NAV reports how to change fonts, colors, and a display of controls based on conditions you specify. To demonstrate how to do this, we'll use the sales template report from the 4NAV report pack. However, you can add conditional formatting on any 4NAV report from any extension using the instructions from this coffee break. To demonstrate how to add conditional formatting to a report, I'm going to use these steps. The prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step one, I will launch the 4NAV designer directly from the Business Central web client and change the font and background color for the invoice amount when it is greater than 5,000. In step two, we will dig a little deeper and change the font of the lines based on the line type. In the third and final step, we will hide the control based on conditions. Let's start with the first step. The prerequisites. Today, I will be working on a Docker environment with the Business Central 2019 full release. I have installed the 4NAV extension and I have executed the step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I will show you today will also work in the cloud-based systems. I also have the 4NAV designer installed on my PC. The 4NAV designer can be downloaded from the 4NAV website. I will be using a pre-release version of the designer so I can show you some cool stuff for my next release. I can add all my conditional formatting straight in the 4NAV layout. Modifying the extension is not needed. All I need to do is to run the report from the 4NAV reports list and select design. This will open the 4NAV designer. So let's go to my Business Central screen, and I will go to the 4NAV setup. And from the 4NAV setup, I can start designing my sales template. When I select the design button, the 4NAV designer will open with, um, with the current layout of the report. Let's have a quick preview of this report. I can preview, preview the report straight from the 4NAV designer. And you will notice that the report looks great, but there's no conditional formatting. The amount is just black and the description lines are all the same. So let's go and have some fun. Let's go and change something. The first thing I want to do is make the invoice amount blue when uh, the amount is over 5,000. Now all the 4NAV controls that display the, uh, display anything on the screen have a uh, in their properties an on-print property. The on-print property is used to determine or to change the uh, anything in the in the layout stuff. If I drill down into it, I get uh, a script editor and I get access to my fields from my data set and in these fields I have my car control. In my car control I can change font settings. These are all the all the relevant settings. I can change the back color or the, the four color. Four color is the text color if you have a text uh, control and I can change the format string. The format string I can use to change for instance uh, the date string to a US string if I have a US customer and to a European string when I have a European customer. Right now, I'm going to have a play with the four color, so I'll double click it, which loads it in my script window, and I'm going to set it to blue. Let's go and have a look at what the report looks like right now. You will notice that my subtotal is now blue. Now, it is blue on every report in every case right now, so let's add some conditions to it. So it, is, so it is only blue when the amount is over 5,000. 
So once again, I'm going to drill down in my on print. And I'm going to wrap my car control for color is blue in an if statement. So I'll say if, then condition brackets, and open, and the close, and do some alignment stuff. Now my if condition, in my if condition, I can use any field from the data set. So let's use the header.amount. And the condition is if the header amount is greater than, than 5,000. So I will add is greater than 5,000. And I will change the four color, but let's go and make it really stand out. Let's change the back color to yellow. And let's go and have a look at what the report looks like right now. Preview it again. And let's preview a report which has an amount greater than 5,000. And you will notice that my subtotal is blue and my background color for this box is now yellow. So that's great, but is it not blue with yellow when the amount is smaller than 5,000? Let's go and find an invoice that is smaller than 5,000. Let's pick this one, which is 916 and a little bit. And you will notice the subtotal here is black with a normal white background. In the preview, you notice that the report I am using has three different types of line, a general ledger line, an item line, and a comment line. Let's give these different fonts so they stand out a bit. Once again, we need to find the on-print property of the control. In the on-print property of the description control, we will once again add some code. So the description control, which has an on print as well. Let's drill down into this. Now, in this case, I want to do some, uh, I want to use some more complex conditions. I want to have one condition when the line is a general ledger line, another condition when the line is an item line, and uh, a fallback condition for every other, every other line. In order to do that, I'm going to use a switch control, which looks like this. If I type really quickly, what it says is switch expression in case of X, it executes a code block and breaks. Case Y, a code block and breaks and default, which means everything else, it executes a code block. So the first thing we need to do is add an expression, which once again, I'm going to grab from my business central data set, namely the line type. Now I can just type type and it will find the line dot type if I double click it it will automatically add it where my cursor is then I'm going to add the cases in the first case I want to use the line type option type general ledger line now for those of you who know the business central data set line type is an option which means it has a couple of set uh, values fortunately in a coming release of for nav we can actually find the field options straight from our uh, business central data set. I don't need to mess about with finding them. I can just open the field options, open type. And you will notice I have a number of options, including the general ledger account. Once again, I double click it and it will add it where my cursor is. Case Y is going to be the item type. So I double click the item type. So right now we have if line type is general ledger account, the first code block executes if it is item, the second code block executes, and with everything else, the third code block executes. So let's add some code to the code blocks. I will remove this. Once again, I go to my cur control uh, data item, data set, and I will open the font. Now for the general ledger accounts, let's make the lines bold. So we'll double click bold and I will assign it the value of true. For item types, I want these to stand out, stand out and be really noticeable. So I'm going to change the font name to Comic Sans MS. 
which I don't think many people are going to use in production reports, but it's a really great font to demo with because it's so distinguishable. And then for the default, so everything else, let's make the size a little bit bigger. Let's go with a car control font size is 15. So a quick recap, if line type is general ledger account, my line will be bold. If it is item, I will have the font Comic Sans MS. And in anything, in any other case, my font size will be 15. Hit OK, and let's go back to my preview and select a report which has a couple of different lines, line types. And make everything a bit bigger so you can all read it. You will notice that my general ledger, now, ledger line is now bold. My item line is Comic Sans MS and my comment line is now uh, font size 15. I promised you one last step, namely the showing and the hiding of controls. One of the requests I get most often from customers who start working with Fornav is can you please make something show or disappear based on some conditions? For instance, they don't want the logo to show on uh, in, in some instances, for instance, if they print to uh, pre-printed paper, which is something that's built into Fornav, or they want to show a different lines body for comment lines uh, or something else. So how do we go about hiding stuff? Well, once again, Fornav has a control for that, namely the show output control which is right here. It is set to true in every uh, in a default case. So for every control, the show output will be set to true because the show output control should be uh, any, uh, any line of script that should um, equate to true or false. If it equates to true, the line, the, the, the control is shown. If it equates to false, the control is not shown. Now everything you see on the screen right here has a show output. So this uh, this line has a show output. Uh, all the controls have show outputs. For instance, a picture has a show output as well. But also the sections, so the bits where you add the uh, the controls, they have show outputs as well, which are right here. So for instance, I can show a different type of document header on the second page of my invoice. Not going to do anything so complicated today. I'm just going to hide the quantity field when my uh, when my line type is a general ledger line, because somehow my customer decided that they don't want the quantity field on general ledger lines. So we'll find the quantity field and let's find the show output and drill down into this. As I said before, all we need is a simple equation that returns true or false. So I'll return. I will remove the true. And once again, go to my business central data set and go find my line type. So my line type is not, and let's go back to my field options, general ledger account. So what this does basically is it says line type is not equal to uh, line.fieldoptions type dot general ledger account, which basically returns to uh, uh, to true if a line is not a general ledger account. Let's save this and let's preview this. I will once again use my invoice with the uh, different lines. There we go. The quantity is visible for my item line and it is not visible for my general ledger line, just as I expected. So let's skip some slides and go straight to, to the summary. Let's recap what we just did. In our production environment for Business Central, we have Fornav installed and activated. We use the Fornav designer that we downloaded from the website to make changes. We can control the way Fornav formats the output based on conditions. Color, background color, and fonts are all subject to conditional formatting. We can also show the con control the showing of controls based on conditions. All Fornav controls have a show output property that we can use to determine if a control is shown or hidden. So 
some additional resources. Today I covered some very basic JavaScript programming that is within the reach of anyone who did high school mathematics and is certainly within the reach of anyone who can write uh, AL code. Fornav has a built-in uh, JavaScript editor and all the, all the scripts you write in uh, Fornav are JavaScript. If you want to know more about JavaScript, I highly recommend the W3Schools JavaScript course. You can find more information on the conditional formatting in the Knowledge Base article. And if you browse the Knowledge Base, you will find a lot of articles that will make your life uh, easier and your reports prettier. Thank you for listening. Mark, do we have any questions? Uh, yeah, so uh, thanks, René, for this uh, presentation. Very clear. Um, so far, we don't have any questions yet, uh, but that doesn't mean that there are not any. Uh, so we're going to give the uh, folks in the audience a moment to type their questions. Um, and while we wait for that, maybe we should announce the session for next week. If you can go to the next slide. I always mix these two up. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh, so uh, next week um, we're going to look at some basic features uh, that we have in Fornav, uh, like what you can do with automatic uh, page numbering and uh, field lookups. Um, the dates and the times are Wednesday and Thursday again, uh, where we do the webinar on uh, Wednesday morning at 10 um, and Thursday morning at uh, at 4 and 10 in uh, in US time. So now let's go back to the previous slide. Once in my life, I will get this order of the slides straight. Um, so here's a couple of, uh, of resources that you can use. Uh, of course, our website uh, where you can find everything. And specifically on the download side, you can download the designer. You can get started for free. Uh, we don't hide any features uh, from uh, the free version. Uh, the only thing that we do in the free version is that we print a watermark um, and as soon as you take a subscription we will remove the watermark for your specific uh, BC tenant or uh, BC license file. Uh, you can download the report pack from AppSource. Uh, it's a great way to get started um, if you do that. All of the webinars, all of the coffee breaks, everything that we want to share, we share on our YouTube channel. Uh, so that's where you can go uh, to watch the recordings of previous coffee breaks and, and webinars. And after all of that, if you have any questions, uh, just feel free to send us an email on uh, info at fornav.com and we will guide it to the correct persons, uh, depending if it's a commercial question or technical question. Of course, we are. Uh, we have a list of stuff that we want to share with you. We have a list of coffee breaks that we're going to do in the next couple of uh, of weeks. Uh, but if you have a specific question, uh, feel free to send us an email uh, with your question. Can you please like do a topic on uh, such and such, and then we will do that. Um, and if we pick your uh, coffee break topic, uh, we're going to send you uh, a gift card for 50 euro or 50 dollars that you can spend uh, on online. And we don't have any questions. So I think we should wrap up. René, thanks for doing this. And to the audience, thanks for attending and hopefully see you next time in the next coffee break. Happy Easter and stay healthy. Bye. Bye.